Hey guys, it's Chili here. Let's take a look at the solution to the homework for tutorial two. Uh, so we had two tasks, right? One task was to take the sum function that we wrote and to change it from using indexes to using pointer arithmetic. So let's uh, let's tackle that first. Uh, well, first of all, we learned about Kant's correctness with pointers. So let's make this guy at least constant. Now the idea here, what we want to do is we want, if we're going to pass in a pointer to some array, two, three, four, five, yeah, that's fine. We're going to pass in a pointer to some array. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to move that pointer to the right and uh, access each element until we reach the end of the array. So we'll calculate some pointer E, and we will move our pointer P to the right until it is equal to E, or as long as it is less than E, I guess. So how do we do that? Well, it's not that it's not that complicated, is it? We got P, we got size, sum is equal to zero. So now we're not going to have an index. We're going to have a constant uh, int pointer. We'll make it const so you can't move the pointer. We'll call it E. We'll call it PE, that's P pointer to the end, and it is going to be equal to P plus size, right? That will move it over by size ints. And as long as P is less than PE, we go P plus plus. And we can do this, right, because this is const uh, pointer. The pointer isn't const. I always... I get messed up trying to use the uh, the terminology. I believe this is uh, referred to as a pointer to const, whereas if you put the const here, it's it's a const pointer. It's annoying. I'm not going to say it's not annoying, but anyways, this one we're not allowed to modify the target, but we are allowed to move the pointer anywhere we like. Uh, so we increment p, we move it to the right, and then for every iteration, we just add an equal to dereference of p. And this should do her. Let me just verify here. Well, I mean, I guess it would be a good idea to put a breakpoint. Uh, so we step over that. The sum is equal to 10. That is correct. Hallelujah. We have liftoff. Now, the second task we were given was a little more interesting. We want to create a function that will reverse an array of ints. Uh, so let's go... Uh, we want to reverse that array of ints in place, by the way. Uh, so we're going to go void, because this isn't going to return jack or shit. And we'll call this one reverse. And we're going to take in an int pointer. And we'll call it... Uh, I'm going to call this one PL for pointer to left. And you'll see why in a second. And we're going to take in the int size again the size of the array to be reversed and then we're gonna do some stuff so what is the stuff that we are going to be doing well here's my plan so we're gonna use two pointers we're gonna use pointer arithmetic for this one by the way uh, so this is going to be PL the left pointer we're also gonna have a PR, right pointer. And all we're going to do is we're going to swap PL and PR. And then I drew, I drew this too big. After we swap, we're going to increment. We're going to increment PL. We're going to decrement PR. And then we're going to check to see whether PL is still less than PR. And if it is, we swap, and then we, you know, increment and decrement. We check, are they still, is L still less than R? It is. We swap, then we increment and decrement. And this is where, uh, this is going to be PR. This is now going to be PL. We check to see if PL is less than PR. It is not, so we finish. And now we have swapped all of these uh, elements, and the array should be reversed. So, 
how do we implement this? Well, first of all, we need to PR. So what we're going to do is we're going to go int pointer to PR is equal to PL plus size. Uh, but this will give us a pointer to the, uh, the, the memory location after the last integer. So we want to subtract one from that. And that should give us a pointer to the right. Now all we got to do is a for loop. For, we don't need to do any initialization. Well, I guess we could put this in the, in the for loop then. That's actually a little bit more elegant. So we'll do that. That's PR. Then as long as PL is less than PR, PL plus plus comma PR minus minus. I don't know if I've ever done this before, but you can use the comma like this to put multiple um, multiple what's the word expressions inside of a for loop section. So the more you know, right? A little bit of uh, a little bit of a trick there. Uh, so now for every one of these, all we got to do is call std swap dereference pl dereference pr, and there you go. And that is how wait. Oh well, I guess we probably have to uh, pound sign include algorithm maybe. Yeah, there we go. Algorithm has done it. So yeah, this uh, yeah, it's fairly elegant way of uh, reversing an array using pointer arithmetic. Now the question is, does it work? Well, all we got to do is call, go down here, we'll call reverse, and we're going to call it on R, and size of it is 4. So now we build this, and we got a breakpoint, so let's run it. So the sum is 10 when we reverse the array. Viola, you have, an, you have a reversed array right there. Right there, right there. Good shit. All right, so there's just some example of using pointer arithmetic to solve problems. Uh, like I said, I usually stick to uh, indexing, but sometimes pointer arithmetic fits, and I will use it in those cases. Um, I encourage you to practice all this pointer stuff that we have uh, covered to just play around with it, experiment, and we will be using it more in you know future videos when it is appropriate, especially in the next video about strings. Uh, and yeah, so that's it for today. I'll see you soon with some more C++.